For our next problem, we're going to analyze a similar bit of code. The only difference between example one and example two is that this one starts at i, which means our analysis is going to be equally as similar. So just like we did before, we're going to look at this innermost line of code and say that that takes constant time. And now we're going to let t of n be the runtime and we can include more details, the running time of the function with input of size n. It's not necessarily worth me writing that down for you here. We can, I trust that you can write out the same exact sentence we wrote in the previous problem. And then we will, again, just as before, express that running time as a summation. So t of n is equal to the outer for loop gets translated directly as the sum from 1 to n. The inner summation gets directly translated as j equals i to 2i squared of C. And now all we need to do is try and analyze this just like we did before. So again, J does not appear inside of the summation. So this is equal to the sum from I equals one to N of C times the top bound of the sum minus the bottom bound of the sum plus one. Remember that that quantity, the top minus bottom plus one is the number of terms in the summation. Now we can try to simplify that, but maybe we can't. In the previous problem, we tried to use a closed form expression. We could still get a closed form expression here. However, this is starting to get a little bit messy. In general, I only try to get a closed form expression when it looks very similar to one of our formulas that we've seen in the past. Here, it looks pretty similar. I can distribute the summation and try to use them. However, I'm just gonna go right to bounding. So let's bound this above. So bound above. To bound this above, we have t of n is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of c times 2i squared minus i plus 1. We need to make that bigger. First, identify that whether it is an increasing or decreasing function and whether it is geometric or non-geometric. 2i squared minus i plus 1 is increasing and it is non-geometric, so our technique is going to be to replace every term of the summation with the largest term that appears inside of the summation. So we keep the bounds of the sum the same, and I replace i with the largest value it obtains. Also note, because I'm bounding above, I am allowed to drop negative terms which do not matter, so I'm going to drop that minus n to make my life a little bit easier and just have 2n squared plus 1. And now I have a summation times something that no longer involves i. Since i no longer appears inside of that summation, it is, for all intents and purposes, as far as i is concerned, a constant value. So we have some effectively constant value added up a fixed number of times. How many times? Just like before, that will be the top bound minus the bottom bound plus 1. This is nice and convenient here. The minus 1 and plus 1 will cancel when I do n minus 1 and plus 1. So I have the top bound minus the bottom bound plus one, which is just n times two times c times two n squared plus one. Let's finish bounding this above. I have c n times two n squared plus I'm replacing one with n squared, the largest term that appears there. So we have two n squared plus n squared. That's three n squared. This is going to be 3n squared times cn, which is 3cn cubed. Now let's try to bound it below. So bound below. Here, we're going to again start with the given summation. t of n is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of c times 2i squared minus i plus 1. First, we want to identify, is it an increasing or decreasing function, whether it's geometric or non-geometric? We already did those classifications before. It is an increasing non-geometric sum, so we're going to split the summation in half and write this as the sum from i equals 1 to n divided by 2. 2i two squared minus i plus 1 plus the same summation starting at n over 2 plus 1 to n of the same thing on the inside. 2i squared minus i plus 1. Because it's increasing, we're going to drop the first summation and keep the second. So we have the sum from 
i equals n over 2 plus 1 to n of c times 2i squared minus i plus 1. Now we need to plug in a value for i, so we're going to replace every term with the smallest that remains. In fact, going forward, why not just simply replace them with n over 2, which is even smaller than n over 2 plus 1, and that'll sim simplify our lives a little bit. So we have c times 2 times n over 2 quantity squared minus n over 2. And then just like we did before, we have a positive 1. We can drop that. When bounding above, we can always drop negative values. When bounding below, we can always drop positive values. And now we have a fixed number of terms, which are adding up a fixed number of times. So that's equal to the top bound minus the bottom bound, which is n over 2 plus 1, plus 1, times the thing on the inside, which is c times 2 times n over 2 quantity squared is n squared over 4 minus n over 2. Now let's see what algebra has in store for us here. This is equal to n minus n over 2. It simplifies in a nice way. That gives me n over 2. And we have a minus 1 and a plus 1, which cancel out in a nice way, times c times 2n squared over 4, which is n squared over 2, minus n over 2. In order to finish bounding this below, I must replace every term that is lower order inside of those brackets with an equivalent higher order term. So we replace negative n over 2 with negative n squared over 4. Where did n squared over 4 come from? I'd need the constant that is smaller than 1 half because if I replace negative n over 2 with negative n squared over 2, which is a valid lower bound, it would make it too small and everything would cancel out. So I replace it with negative n squared over 4 to make everything not cancel out. So this equals cn over 2, and I combine those first two terms, times n squared over 2 minus n squared over 4 is n squared over 4. So this equals cn cubed over 8. So... It's bounded above by 3cn cubed and below by cn cubed over 8. So it is in theta of n cubed. So we have that cn cubed over 8 is less than or equal to t of n is less than or equal to 3cn cubed. Thus, t of n is in theta of n cubed. We're bounded above and bounded below by constant times n cubed. Notice we got a little bit lazy here. We didn't specifically comment on the size that n needs to be. Just be careful and make sure that your statement is actually true. We're not going to be so nitpicky about the size of n, that n naught value that we have in our definition of theta. We're going to start to be a little more lax in our formality there. So we are when we did this bound here, for example, and replace negative n over 2 with negative n squared over 4, we do not need to explicitly state what size n needs to be. We assume that you can do that at this point. 